The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has blamed the indigenous people of Biafra and the Eastern Security Network for the attacks. Hello? However, IPOB, in its reaction, denied involvement in the attack, saying its men were in the bush chasing herdsmen. As an aside, President Mohamed Buhari has described the attacks in Imo State as terrorism and has ordered security agencies to apprehend the culprits. Joining us to discuss this live from Oweri is the Chief Press Secretary to the Imo State Governor, Mr. Oguike Nwachiku. Thank you very much, Mr. Nwachiku, for joining us. Thank you so very much. It's my pleasure. Great. Um, paint us a picture of what the investigations so far has been as the spokesperson for the Imo State government. Where does the government stand on all of this that's been happening, especially for uh, a state where we've not necessarily seen these kinds of um, acts, dastardly acts? What exactly do you think is responsible for what happened yesterday? Well, if I had it clear, if I had it clearly, Miriam, because uh, not, it's not very clear, you want to know what the government is doing. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yesterday, the governor was uh, at the uh, Nigerian Correctional uh, Services, as well as the police headquarters, to have uh, on, the, on, the, on the spot assessment of what actually happened. And uh, I think he has a hand on what, has, what, what happened. And uh, he has met with security chiefs uh, and uh, they evaluated the situation. You know, and he also addressed the media yesterday. Uh, and uh, as we speak, investigation is going on on what really transpired. Why all of a sudden has Imo State become a hotbed of violence? I remember that earlier this year there was a bombardment. The army was invited to deal with certain elements that the governor described as, um, you know, terrorists. So ex why exactly is Imo State in this position for a state that we did not know it? Uh, for violence. No, 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 no. No, I, no, no, I, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. Imo said it's a peaceful state. Uh, Imo people are peaceful people. That's what but I'm saying. Imo, I'm yeah, saying that it has yeah, not yeah, been known for violence up until now. And, and I'm asking, what do you think is responsible for the violence all of a sudden? Well, 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 it is what investigation will, will, will unravel. But uh, the, the, the governor, the governor has said generally that some people are, you know, making political capital out of the state, you know, trying to get crisis here and there. And I think this is one of the one of those things that uh, you know those who have political interest in this state are trying to do. But you, you, you know, you can also you can also uh, uh, agree with me that even people are peaceful people. They they don't take kindly what is happening here. You know, and, and uh, they are they are prepared to resist whatever plan anybody has to, 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 to make sure that this is is unstable. Uh, uh, so you're telling me that the government is suspecting and blaming political opponents, if not the opposition, for instigating this level of violence, even though the president and I Security I agencies are blaming IPOP. You're thinking that maybe IPOP could be a tool in the hands of your opposition. Is that what you're saying? What did you say? What did you say? Come again. Are you saying that your government suspects that opposition is instigating this level of violence, so much so that there was a prison break, even though security agencies have said that this might be IPOP? In fact, they are accusing IPOP for this violence, you're supposing that your the opposition is using IPOB against the government of the day. Is that what you're insinuating? No, no. I hope you must. You, you, you see, the fact that uh, that uh, people, people said uh, the prison in Imo State was attacked does not mean that this is the first thing this kind of situation uh, is happening in Nigeria. Of there course. have been cases where you know uh, a hoodlum went to prison and removed the inmate. So, so that's exactly what happened there. And the investigation will find out what really happened. Now, but you also know, because you made mention of IPOP, you know, on several occasions, you know, they had, they had, they had, you know, uh, 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 taking responsibility for cases, cases of insecurity of, of, of this nature. You know, so if, if for any reason or the other, the governor is saying, look, there are criminal elements in this, of, of, of organization. I think I think it is not something that you should sweep under the carpet. 
It's part of what investigation will not have. And so I'm, I'm just wondering, because you started off by saying that Imo people are very peace-loving, they're very peaceful people, and they found out what has happened. But in that same breath, you're saying that there are political opponents and elements who are somewhat I instigating this level of violence. That seems to me as you speaking from both sides of your mouth, because if emo people, which also involves uh, the people who you called opposition or politicians, they, if you're saying that they love peace and they're peaceful people, why would they be the same people you are suspecting of instigating this level of violence? So it's not unlikely, it's not unlikely in my you know, because uh, they, they have these instances of where, for instance, for instance, one of the, uh, one of the past governors of this state, just uh, yesterday, you know, called a press conference yesterday in Abuja, you know, saying that uh, the state, the state, uh, the governor, the governor is not uh, handling the, 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 the and the government has said about the set of insecurity in this state. You know, so how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you, uh, uh, you know, explain that? But it's his job you know, as and, opposition and, and, to and criticize you. Whatever you do, he may this not agree with almost, everything that you do. immediately the incident took place. Almost immediately the incident took place. And somebody is uh, calling a press conference in Abuja. You know, to, 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 to allege that the governor was, uh, was, was killing the outside in, 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 Imo, in Imo State. So how do you, how do you place that? You know, so when we, when we talk about, about uh, those who are making political capital out of the situation, we know what we're talking about. What should the government be doing now to deal with this issue of insecurity so that it doesn't repeat itself? No, no, no. The governor, the governor is the governor is up to the situation. The governor, you know, uh, uh, yesterday when he spoke to Imo people, he assured them that, uh, he, he, you know, the, of course, you know that the primary reason for government, the primary reason government is this, is the protection of life and property, and he's not taking it lightly. Hmm. So whatever measures are being taken to ensure that Imo people are protected, this go this government and this governor, I can assure you, will take that step. He understands fully well, you know, that he, the major thing the government of Imo State is, is to protect people's lives and property. And he will right. not shy away from that responsibility. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us. Uh, Mr. Nwachiku is the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor of Imo State. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you so very much, Muriel. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now and let you know what Nigerians feel about the prison break in Oweri that occurred yesterday. When we return, I'll give you my take. Well, I don't have much to say, but we all know that we are not safe in this country. In terms of security, we don't have security in Nigeria entirely. I uh, don't want to tell you that uh, we don't have security to start with. The government is totally failing in security. The first primary assignment of government is to protect life and property. If uh, people can go to a prison and break prison for how many hours, no intervention of the government, it means there is, there is no smoke without fire. There is something behind there. So what is there? What I want to tell the government is that the people are able to react back to the system. Because when you push somebody back to the wall, it will reverse the device back. Those people, they're not young people, they're not old people, it's young. If they have enough things to do, they have to place to engage themselves. They can't go and start doing such things. And the people are behind them. And the government is number one. Let's say, tell ourselves the truth. Maybe the security is not enough. Because if the security, before you go to Asso Rock, I never hear say they break Asso Rock before. It has, uh, the security in Asso Rock is, is too tight. But prison, the all these uh, uh, our officer maybe they say they should be secure the criminal they don't went out they don't go and drink somewhere you know so enjoy themselves why they don't go break uh, prison and then I think they collaborate with the, all this criminal stuff and all this kind of thing you know they are uh, you know uh, me to me I never hear before say maybe they break prison in abroad like all these years is only this country the corruption. It still continue. First of all, they say they came with machine gun and number of AK-47. 
that shows how insecure we are in the country. Especially if the chief security officer in the country can utter the statement that everybody will be the one to protect themselves in the country. That shows how we are not safe in the country. So I think at this point, let's just be sincere to ourselves. We, at a point, I think we put a region by the side first because it's not everybody that has access to gun. And we cannot go and collect licenses. So if everybody will go back to their villages to go and look for something to protect themselves, I think that would be better. Because what actually happened in Imo can happen anywhere because we are not safe. And that's, uh, that shows how insecure we are in the country. And we pray that God will keep on to protect our, every one of us in the country. Security, if they are doing well, they cannot sleep before they break prison yard. Because prison yard is broken, it's not broken silent, it's broken with by force, boo, boo. People must understand that they are broken prison yard. So maybe they were sleeping before they break prison yard, nobody knows. Well, uh, our security, they are weak. I would say our securities are weak in, in this country. Because it happens here in Lagos, at uh, Alagbon here. It is only God that saves us. Especially in this area, Ekoi area, it's only God that saves us. Uh, I only I, I advise our security, they should tighten up their belts so that this will not occur again in our country. Especially here at Lagos, we have uh, a lot of people living here, the indigent, non-indigent. And um, if security are not, too, is not that tightened, it's going to be a very bad thing to us, especially at Lagos that work in the, in the night. Here's my take. In politics, they say there are no permanent friends nor enemies, but interests. Now, this statement doesn't seem to quite describe the situation in Rivers APC as we speak. Two big wigs tussling over power and supremacy at the detriment of all concerned in the party. This drag has cost the party tickets in 2019, and now it may also cost them local government seats. The party as it is has been divided into two, making the opposition stronger and in charge of River State. So what should these warring party titans do if the party must forge ahead and prepare for 2023? I guess they both know, they do know, that it's to set aside their differences and work together in the overall interests of the party. And now on the issue of insecurity in Emo State, I will reiterate. When we see these acts of violence surface on some level, it's best to deal with it at that point. But you know, in Nigeria, we allow it to fester into a hydra-headed monster. Then we begin to run from pillar to post. We need to put a stop to this and deal decisively with these terrorists and not allow them to believe that Nigeria is weak, nor is it a free-for-all state where these acts of violence can go on freely. We need to stop this now. I am Mariana Kohn, thanking you for being part of the program. See you tomorrow.